Yes. Yes, Aranya. Briefly tell me about yourself. Sir, I'm Ananya. I come from Mahbub Nagar district of Telangana. Uh, I'm a 22 year old graduate. I have majored in geography from Miranda House University of Delhi, and I have a minor's degree in economics as well. Uh, post my graduation, I've been preparing for uh, UPSC civil services, and I'm a cricket enthusiast, sir. And during my free time, I like to read books, especially fiction, and uh, I like to teach and mentor students as well. Teach and Mentor. Okay. When did you do the habit of teaching and mentoring students? Sir, it was during the COVID times when I first got introduced to the idea of mentoring and teaching. So it was a tough time for everybody, and uh, students all across the world have taken steps by themselves in order to reach out to underprivileged students. So, for instance, there was a Stanford University platform called SOC South Asian Winter Camp, which was about uh, reaching out to not just underprivileged but also students from South Asian countries in order to teach and make aware of them of the opportunities that are present to them post to their uh, probably 12th uh, standard. So that was when I got registered myself as a teacher come mentor on this platform and it was a wonderful experience I would say so. Okay, can you name the platform once again? I could not get it. SOC, yeah? SCS, yeah. Sir, it is SAWC, South Asian Winter Camp. South Asian winter, winter Camp. So in which, yes. in which months it happens generally? Sir, it usually it is named as a winter camp, but it happened in June to August, sir. As far as I remember, I don't know the exact reason. Probably it is because it's winter over there. But yeah. Are you sure? You are a geography student, right? Yes, sir. So yes. is May, June, July winter in Myanmar, Indonesia, these countries? No, Please. sir. I mean, uh, okay. the organization out of, in out of South Asian countries. Tell me, yes. out of South Asian countries. Not only South Asian, Southeast Asian countries, Southeast Asian. Name the countries which have winter in the month of May and June. Sir, I think. Sir, most of the countries of Southeast Asia are uh, below equator. Uh, for instance, there is Indonesia, there is Philippines that are uh, basically below equator. And I think they have winter in these months. Sir. Whereas India being in the northern hemisphere uh, above equator have summer in these months. Okay. So you said that most of the countries in Southeast Asia are below equator. Most of the countries. And you named two countries, uh, Indonesia and Philippines. Tell me other countries which are below equator. First of all, are you sure Philippines is below equator? Sir, sorry, sir. I'm not exactly sure of it, but and I then, took and it. And regarding Indonesia, do you think enter Indonesia is below equator? Do you think? Sir, I'm not sure of it either, but yes, sir, maybe some part of it. Okay, anyhow, let's move on. This South Asian winter camp. You registered it when you were in graduation. Yes, sir. In the second year of your graduation. Yes, sir. And did you get a certificate from it? Yes, sir, I did. And whom did you teach? Which countries uh, candidates did you teach? So, teaching, I had students from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, from Sri Lanka. However, sir, mentoring, I did mentor only two students. One was from Sri Lanka, the other was from Bangladesh. Okay. So, uh, they are from which class? The students? So they were doing their plus one and plus two respectively. One from one was in plus two, plus one, the other was in plus two. Very good, very good. Now see, when you spoke to Sri Lankan, uh, is it boy or girl? Yes. Is it a boy or girl? She is from Sri Lanka. She is a girl. Her name is Tiani. Tiani. Okay. See, Sri Lanka has yes. gone into economic crisis or depression from last few years. Can you tell me the major reasons behind that, Aranya? Yes, sir. So, firstly, I believe the policies which that were in short term in nature is the primary reason 
uh, that led Sri Lanka into economic crisis. For instance, uh, the Sri Lankan heads of the government have uh, wanted to make Sri Lanka a country dependent on organic farming, and thereby they have completely curtailed the import of fertilizers. However, sir, while this was a good initiative, I believe this was not pragmatic, and it was very short-sighted in nature. So I believe the first uh, reason is the short-sighted nature of policies. That also was because of lack of accountability of heads of the government to the people that has led to this crisis. And secondly, sir, I believe excessive dependence of Sri Lanka as an economy on other countries uh, for its economic sustenance. For instance, Sri Lanka is heavily dependent on tourist inflows from other countries. And even for imports, it is dependent on fertilizers uh, and aid from other countries. This excessive dependence on other countries for its economic sustenance has also somewhere impacted it because this is a time of uh, critical supply chain disruptions that are happening in our world economy. So excessive dependence on imports without a, sus without a sustainable level of self-reliance is going to harm countries in the long run, which is what has happened with Sri Lanka. So you said one organic farming. Second thing is, instead of uh, having self-reliance, they're excluded from other countries. Can you name a few countries on which Sri Lanka is highly dependent on? So firstly, Sri Lanka is dependent on countries like India for aid, as well as imports like fertilizers. And Sri Lanka is also dependent on countries like China. For instance, China is carrying out uh, many infrastructure development projects in Sri Lanka, which are on a very critical debt related debt related position. So that is something that Sri Lanka is also dependent on. So I think primarily India and China are two countries because of the geographical proximity also on which China, uh, Sri Lanka is dependent on. See countries like Nepal, Maldives and Sri Lanka, these countries always have this dilemma of if at all they are more dependent on China, it may affect the relationship with India. And if we are closer to India, it affects the relationship with China. So can you compare how Nepal, Sri Lanka and Maldives balance the relation between India and China? And according to you, which country is really able to balance very well? And what is your suggestion regarding this? I want your suggestion regarding this. Sir, firstly, regarding Maldives, I would say, sir, because of the nature of the garments that are there in Maldives, a particular garment is completely pro-China and another garment is completely pro-India. So there have been alternative periods of pro-China, pro-India narrative that has been going on in Maldives. And I think that uh, Maldives has not been really good in uh, balancing both of uh, relations with both of the countries. And coming to Nepal, sir. Uh, so while uh, Nepal has been a good, uh, has had good relations with India, I believe from the past uh, few years, especially because of the border issues that are going on with respect to Limpia Dura and Kalapani areas, I believe Nepal has been inching closer towards China and uh, it is even relevant in the maps that it has been releasing and uh, various other things that it has been doing. And regarding Sri Lanka, sir, I think Sri Lanka has been uh, best among the three, if I would have to say, because uh, Sri Lanka has not taken any explicit positions with regard to its over-reliance on any, any one of the countries. And it also it is unfortunate that uh, Sri Lanka has gone into debt trap situation because of uh, China, because of development of Humban Tota Boat and others. However, sir, I believe Sri Lanka has explicitly stated that it wants good relations with both of the countries. And it has never taken any explicit stand like Maldives, like it is doing with India Out campaign or even Nepal about uh, uh, its excessive inclination towards one country. Sir, as far as suggestions are concerned for India, sir, I think it is... The question is for India. What should India do? Yes. So firstly, I believe India, which ha India has not have been doing knee-jerk reactions. So for instance, even with what has happened with Maldives, India has been continuing with its aid and has adopted a pragmatic policy. It has not been taking knee-jerk reactions because it knows that India needs support of these neighbors in order to assert itself regionally and even globally. So India has to continue. Uh, giving aid to these countries that it has been doing and also complete projects on a time basis because if we deliver if we promise more and deliver less then definitely that is going to uh, dissolution these countries so i think india has to work on that front and uh, secondly sir i think more more intra regional trade and intra regional integration has to be focused upon there are enough multilateral platforms for instance there is sarc there is bimstick these multilateral organizations have to be utilized to their fullest potential and uh, 
they have to be effectively uh, integrated so that india can very well become a good neighbor for these countries okay so you thought for a, ch- a student from sri lanka and somebody from uh, bangladesh bangladesh sir. bangladesh right presently so, how, presently in india bangla relations in the present scenario if you consider india bangla relation are there any major irritants in the relation irritants sir i think with bangladesh we have had really good relations comparatively and we have done both both the sides have taken really good steps in order to strengthen their relations however i do believe some there are some irritants sir for instance the water issue is something that comes to my mind right now uh, there is tista river issue and there are other several other rivers with which uh, india and bangladesh have not come to a conclusion yet and secondly sir since india shares the largest land boundary with bangladesh uh, there is this issue of uh, immigration that is happening from bangladesh that might uh, pose security challenges to india's sensitive northeast uh, apart from that sir there are also uh, some extra terrestrial elements that are taking help from extremists that are present in bangladesh which is also one of the irritants that is there apart from that sir i believe even bangladesh recently has becoming is becoming closer to china if you see it has entered into some uh, agreements with uh, china and it is also entering into some major infrastructure development activities with china while it is not as severe as it is with other countries like maldives and nepal i believe india should be cautious india should try to uh, maintain its relations with bangladesh as it has done before see as you said india should be cautious with any country that is becoming closer to china in general okay yes sir now african continent most of the countries in africa china is investing more in infrastructure and china is almost getting control in many african countries however africa is very much required for india in the long term for mineral resources or otherwise also so in this direction tell me what india is doing with africa to counter the weight of china in africa so firstly india's approach uh, in africa is radically different from what is, what is being done by china while china is focusing on uh, deriving most benefits from africa for itself india has been doing it on a cooperation basis and cooperative basis india believes in delivering democratic projects that are of some significance to africa for instance we are uh, uh, for instance the ngos uh, the cgs that are present in india like kudumbashri are uh, cooperating with african solar mamas in order to develop uh, in order to give them some projects that are beneficial to them and secondly so i believe india is also doing uh, multilateral uh, initiatives in order to uh, benefit uh, africa for instance with japan we have asia africa growth corridor that which has not taken full scale yet but i believe is a good project in the sense that it uh, its aims and objectives are radically different from what is being done in the form of bri from china uh, apart from that sir i believe india is trying to give voice to africa so recently in g20 summit we have inducted the african union as uh, one of the members into the uh, g20 which i believe is nothing but india is trying to give a voice to the global south and africa constitutes one of the major chunks of the global south and i believe it is a significant empowerment step for africa so i believe these are some of the steps that india is doing so okay okay Then see, they are talking about organic farming in Sri Lanka, right? Yes. In India, in India, there are many proponents of organic farming. Particularly yes. in states like Punjab, Haryana, or all states affected by Green Revolution, you know, scientists are proposing organic farming at least most of the places. But still, it is not being taken up by the farmers. Okay. Now, if you become district collector of a particular village, I mean, particular district in Punjab or Haryana, yes. as as district collector, if you if you want to no promote organic farming in the districts tell me three or four major steps you do but your steps should be such a way that they have to convince the farmers you should be practical in your approach tell me what you can do yes <clears throat> so firstly i think i have clear communication with farmers because there are many prejudices as well as many uh, hesitations that are there from the farmers if they have to switch from chemical farming to organic farming so i'll try to have clear communication with farmers by engaging with experts and tell to them the benefits of the organic farming and also tell to them the realities 
that initially maybe the yields may be low but in the long run how it will benefit them and uh, i'll also try to engage with experts and demonstrate to them uh, some of the successful organic farming uh, initiatives that have been taken across the world so that uh, there is no information asymmetry or information gaps with farmers and uh, apart from that sir secondly i believe it is extremely important to ensure that there is adequate input facilities that are available to them so i'll make them aware of the various initiatives that are being brought out by the government in the organic farming sector and i'll try to enroll them into these schemes so that they can benefit on the input front also and they will have access to all the inputs necessary and third sir i believe most important is marketing unless there is marketing unless there are adequate marketing opportunities i don't think uh, farmers will be uh, convinced about uh, shifting to organic farming so sir i'll try to promote uh, marketing of these products by kind of uh, giving wide marketing to them via social media platforms or maybe encouraging cooperative marketing uh, units so that they will be able to better uh, find markets for them uh, and also sir i think yes sir these are some of the steps that i would do in order to convince farmers you said about marketing but for marketing certification is very important yes sir tell me about the present certification system available in india for organic farmers i mean for organic products yes sir. sir currently there are two modes of certification as far as i can recall that are present for organic farming in india so one is held by ministry of agriculture whereas the, the other is held by ministry of commerce i guess uh, sir while i am not exactly aware of the details i am sure that there are certain uh, irregularities and confusions regarding the certification system that is uh, present and i think they have to be streamlined so that there is less confusion among farmers in order to utilize them the best what miss what kind of irregularities are you trying to mention here ananya so firstly i guess there is confusion among which certification to adopt i guess uh, in the sense that there is one of ministry of agriculture like i mentioned ministry of commerce i think farmers are confused are, about are which you sure that there is one certification by ministry of agriculture and one certification given by ministry of commerce directly are you sure about it sir i think ministry of commerce definitely has one and ministry of agriculture is doing it with help of some other regional organizations if i'm not wrong these two organizations means are the global organizations regional organizations government organizations no sir some set up some kind of cooperative mechanism is present cooperative or private sir not completely sure but okay. as far as i can tell it's cooperative okay okay see tell me different between organic farming and natural farming so both both kinds of farming are sustainable in nature however organic farming is something that still needs some kind of inputs to it in the sense that there is requirement of organic manure there is requirement of uh, other other signs of inputs however sir natural farming is something that is less dependent on such inputs uh, and there is less necessity to do anything ex situ or external uh, rather uh, we are excessively dependent on natural regeneration capacity of soils or natural way of growing rather than providing any sort of external inputs okay see you are from delhi university and i think yes. mirinda house is like good college what is the ranking of mirinda house sir it has been consecutively ranked number 1 in nirf from the past 6 years i guess in nirf entire india yes sir in du or entire india among all universities colleges institutes number of mirinda house only sir in the college category in the entire country miranda has been ranked the number 1 for the past 6 years under nirf what are the parameters of uh, nirf so some of the parameters that i can recall right now or the perception of the college among the peers secondly there is also a parameter of graduation outcomes thirdly there is also a parameter of research ecosystem that is there in the college yes sir, these are some of the parameters that i can recall as of now what do you mean by graduation outcomes sir i'm not completely sure of it sorry and how do you measure perception 
you so said sorry sir i'm not you, you said you said three things one is perception then graduate now graduation outcome third is research what is the research research ecosystem opportunities that are available in the college ecosystem okay first graduate outcomes okay you are not sure about graduate outcomes first of all so not sure right yes sir okay tell me research ecosystem how do you measure the how do you measure research ecosystem so firstly i believe infrastructure is critical uh for instance in our college there are chemistry labs that are present uh there is also ds kotari research uh, center that is present in our college so i think firstly infrastructure is something uh, that is uh, necessary and uh, secondly i believe sir there has to be some sort of uh, research environment also present in the form of uh, teachers who can guide students in order to undertake uh, research as well as availability and access to websites for instance our college has access to jstor website uh, give free access to jstor websites for its students so that they can access journals and other kind of uh, things so i believe this is also something that uh, connotes uh, presence of research environment in the college yes sir these are the two primary things i believe mm you are discussing mostly about the inputs infrastructure websites and all but output is more important no you measure research of an institute based on papers published from that institute right if no papers yes, if no papers are published you only have infrastructure websites may not really help i think anyhow moving on right. uh, ananya IITs are also considered to be among the top in NIRF, right? Yes, sir. I believe they do. Huh. So, does NIRF rank IIT separately a separate list, and Milan those separate list, or is it uniform list, same list? Sir, they are in the separate list. So, for instance, there is uh, colleges under management category. There are colleges under engineering category. So, in this way, they are they are ranking separately. Okay. So, in the category of university, is there a category like this? University category is there? Yes, sir. There are. There is a category called university categories. Okay. So, which university is in the top? Sir, I'm not sure of it. Okay. What are deemed universities, and and what are universities? The difference between universities and deemed universities. What is the difference? so deemed universities uh, is a so universities are basically as we know uh, uh, that are given uh, uh, recognition by uh, ugc deemed universities are another set of uh, universities which have not attained the status of universities but uh, such uh, tag is given based on its performance in some of the categories in nirf uh, the multidisciplinary nature of the courses that are being offered at such universities and other such criteria based on categories of nirf sir based on performance of uh, such universities in nirf ranking in any one in any one of the segments it is also one of the basis on which a particular institution is given a tag of deemed university so to get the university they have performed well in nirf ranking how do sir, you know this sir it is one of how do you know that uh, ranking in nirf will, will... Is, is is essential for getting status of deemed university sir i'm not sure if it is mandatory but yes sir while giving a tag they usually also see if if the institute is performing in any one of the categories in any one of the criteria that is mentioned in nirf so that there is more credibility to the tag that is being given hmm. okay you have done uh ba honors in in eco geography economy english and environmental science yes sir okay so why did you choose geography and environment in your bachelor's when you have taken those subjects what is your idea basically why did you choose those subjects sir i have chosen geography as my major uh, environmental science was something that was compulsory for everybody uh, in their first years okay. so it was not a choice okay. yeah one well, first year okay Tell me geography. Why you chose geography? Why not economy? Why not political science? Why geography? So, firstly, I had geography in my eleventh uh, and twelfth as well. 
so that is one of the natural reasons why uh, okay. geography was my preference in graduation also right right so okay. so your option for upsc is so my optional is anthropology and so when intermediate and degree you have taken geography you didn't be honest from a prestigious college like virinda house in geography why you left geography and took up something else so firstly uh by i had limited time uh, in my hands sir i had one year uh, to prepare for the examination so i was uh, thinking about the practicality as well i wanted a subject uh, which was uh, compact in syllabus and uh, uh, for, for which material was also available so i zeroed in on some subjects geography and anthropology and some of them sir and then i compared uh, the syllabus sir while i definitely did my graduation in geography our course was heavily oriented towards the practicality of the subject rather than the theory which is being tested in upsc so definitely i do have a advantage if i had taken geography but i believed uh, geography anyways i was doing uh, so- something new because of the theory part and at the same time sir i became really interested in human and cultural evolution because i happened to read books of uh, yuval noah harari uh, during covid Uh, especially the sapiens book which gave me deep insights into the nature of human and cultural evolution which really got me interested in anthropology and i started to pick some of the books of anthropology post to which i really gained an interest and pursued took up anthropology so okay so you have done geography right for 3 years 3 years no 3 years course yes sir okay tell me Mediterranean region gets uh, rainfall in this season. Sorry, sir. Mediterranean region, Mediterranean yes, or Mediterranean? How to pronounce it? Sir, I think Mediterranean. Okay, Mediterranean region. In which season does it get rainfall? Rainfall. Sir, I think Mediterranean region gets rainfall in summer season. You think, or are you sure about it? Sir, I'm not sure. Then how can you say summer? Is we have any logical thinking behind the reason for telling summer? Is there a reason behind? Sir, no, sir. It's just vague memory that I have. I happen to read somewhere that Mediterranean region has uh, summer uh, rainfall in summer region and uh, winter. I mean, no rainfall in. winter season okay now tell me why winter and has rainfall in summer and no rain winter what is the reason sir sorry sir i'm not exactly Have aware you of heard the of shifting of plant ravens yes sir i did which plant ravens blow on winter and sea i mean winter and region sorry which plant ravens blow on winter and region in summer season sir i have to look into this again sir i have to read a bit about it okay see inside the earth you might have studied about the earth right in geography you might have studied about the interior of the earth right yes sir yes sir if you look at the earth's interior the inner core and outer core which one is a liquid see the outer core is liquid sir but where temperature is where is temperature higher inner core outer core sir as far as i can remember uh, temperature increases as one goes uh, deep down into the earth so i believe out of uh, inner core is more uh, uh, has more temperature than outer core if inner core has more temperature then how can inner core be solid outer core liquid is the material different sir no sir i believe the material is same uh, uh, it is uh, nickel and nickel and iron uh, okay. but uh, so i think it's because of the pressure conditions differences in pressure conditions that leads to i mean one second please sir nenu main office no which is main office kandi mix it mix it Yeah, can you please elaborate on pressure conditions? What kind of pressure conditions causes this kind of anomaly that higher temperature is solid and lesser temperature is liquid? 
so naturally the inner core uh, is subjected to more pressure conditions when compared with the outer core because of the depth of the uh, uh, layer so since the pressure is more uh, on the in a in a core it is solid in nature while the outer core is liquid in nature and economy you are taking economy i mean economy is your minor is there for all three years sir it is a minor it is there for two years first and second year okay what is uh, you might have heard about physical deficit do you call physical yes. or physical sir i call it physical okay physical deficit tell me what is primary deficit so while fiscal deficit includes all kinds of government borrowings that government has to repay primary deficit doesn't include the interest uh, borrowings that are there it, it excludes the interest borrowings from the set of borrowings that a country has taken then what is revenue deficit so revenue deficit is basically revenue expenditure that is in excess of uh, revenue receipts and it might not just include uh, uh, the interest borrowings but also other kinds of revenue expenditure whether it is expenditure on uh, regular schemes uh, maintenance schemes and other such things so for example the interest paid on the loan taken from abroad borrowings from abroad interest paid does it come under revenue expenditure the interest paid sir i'm not sure of it what is it uh sir i'm not sure of it not sure. okay okay so tell me the pensions pensions come under revenue expenditure capital expenditure so they come under the revenue expenditure are you sure yes sir i'm sure is revenue expenditure is it only of the government or public also for example i have uh, taken loan from some organization some bank in uk usa and i am paying uh, interest every month or uh, annual interest as a person uh, my company pays interest do you count do you count under the fiscal deficit revenue deficit or no is it only government related sir i think the revenue expenditure and uh, any budget related uh, uh, statistics that are presented uh, pertain to central and state governments only and not private sector okay so for example uh, if telangana government borrows some money from certain banks in usa or singapore and if they are paying interest every month telangana government is it counted in the uh, national uh, fiscal deficit sir i do not think it is counted in the national deficit but rather if borrowing from uh, foreign governments is in fact uh, uh, counted under revenue expenditure then it might get reflected in state level but not union level no no are you sure about it sir no sir i'm sure i'm not sure because i'm not sure if uh, uh, loans taken from interest being paid on loans taken from foreign governments is in fact reflected in revenue expenditure or not no no if it is reflected if it is reflected is it reflected in the central government's uh, revenue deficit or no i mean no sir i don't think no sir okay okay now moving on you are from mahabubnagar right yes sir tell me the one district one product of mahabubnagar first of all is it there or not there sir uh, i have not heard about it Okay, have you ever heard ODOP one digital one product? Yes, sir, I did. Tell me some some uh, products for some districts that you know. Sir, I have to look into this. What is a single district? Entire India, you cannot recall the single district also. Single district also. Sir, I mean I know some of the products, but I don't know the districts exactly where they. uh come from okay tell me the products sir there is 
i heard there is something called dokra craft that is there uh, that is also being promoted which craft dokra craft dokra metal craft okay. is there that is being promoted okay then and yes sir this this is one thing that i can recall if at all you are asked to suggest one product for mahabub nagar which product do you suggest for mahabub nagar under what do you if you have to suggest sorry sir if you have to suggest a product for mahabub nagar yes, which sir. one would you suggest so can it include agricultural products also of course it can i have yes. heard of black rice uttar pradesh sudhar yes, nagar so mahabub nagar is famous for custard apples so probably i would suggest custard apples what is so unique about custard apples of mahabub nagar they are there in every district of telangana not every but may in telangana sir i have heard that there and also tasted them they are more sweeter when compared with the uh, custard apples that i have tasted elsewhere is it so more sweeter is, is it more sweeter or sweeter so sweeter okay. sweeter than other okay. yeah custard apples okay so tell me how you can increase the revenue of the or income of the custard apple farmers if you are uh, agriculture secretary of telangana as you came from mahabub nagar you want to do something for districts and yes. in your in your hands you have authority to take decisions and frame policies to increase the income of the custard custard what is called custard apple custard apple uh, yes, sir. custard apple farmers if you have to increase the revenue income tell me three four good suggestions so firstly i think food processing has to be promoted for instance custard apples can be used to make some kind of jams they also can be used in other kinds of uh, uh, products like for instance they can be used to make some desserts so that uh, food processing is something that has to be promoted so that farmers will be able to have better marketing options in that sense and secondly sir i believe marketing conditions definitely have to be improved uh, for that i believe cold storage and other sort of storage mechanisms has to be provided to the farmers so that they will be able to better have storage mechanisms in place and then uh marketing conditions definitely have to be improved uh apart from that sir i think i can also try to get uh, some sort of marketing in the sense that i can ask for if if there's something unique about custard apples of mahabub nagar i can ask for gi tag to these products and then i can market and brand them nationally as well as internationally so that they will have more markets at the national level as well as international level uh this these are some of the steps that i would take in order to increase the revenue sir right now are there any exports of custard apple to other countries from india sir i am not sure of it okay do you know that uh, banginpalli mangoes are not taken by european countries because of certain measures i have heard about that when you try to yes sir i have heard of what are those yes, measures sir. under which measures uh, the import of banginpalli mangoes have been uh, not accepted by several countries of europe European Union. Sir, I believe they are uh, sanitary and phytosanitary measures uh, that sanitary, usually develop. What is the difference between sanitary and phytosanitary? Sir, uh, separately I don't know them, but uh, uh, together I know that uh, those pertain to uh, pesticide residue limit as well as uh, presence of. Uh, other kinds of living organisms and all such things will are catered to under such provisions so okay see telangana telangana after getting separated from andhra pradesh yes sir do you think its developmental pace is far higher than when it was in andhra pradesh so definitely sir i do believe uh, telangana's uh, developmental pace is more than what it has been under united uh, andhra pradesh in fact uh, the performance of telangana in various uh, indices that are released by the national government uh, also points out to the fact that telangana has been doing well and in fact sir even at the per capita levels and other okay. such uh, front also telangana has been doing well 
Okay, now tell me in Telangana during the recent elections, a scheme has been asked to be stopped by the election commission. Yes, sir. And the government actually says that decision from election commission. Can you name the scheme? Sir, it's right to ban the scheme, sir. Why do you think criticism from the Telangana government is uh, acceptable according to you? Shall we really stop payment to farmers during elections? So definitely model code of conduct and other such things are extremely essential in order to preserve the free and fair nature of elections. And uh, Election Commission of India has discretion in order to decide what constitutes a violation of MCC and what is not. So regarding the criticism of Telangana government to the uh, uh, Election Commission's actions, sir, it was a statement by political leader that actually triggered uh, Election Commission's decision that uh, when, when voters are going about to vote, they will have... Uh, uh, a message that right bandhu's uh, income has been deposited into the banks this is something that might actually uh, uh, trigger some sort of uh, some sort of issues in the voters behavior so yes sir i believe uh, election commission of india has a rightful authority in order to judge what constitutes violation of mcc and what does not okay recently there is a water dispute it's there for quite some time, but recently it has been the news continues between AP and Telangana. Can you tell me what is the can tell me exactly what is the dispute? So there are a couple of reasons the dispute has been going on. Firstly, so uh, Telangana wants 50-50 share in the rivers that are flowing uh, from from it, so that uh, it will not be deprived of the water share. Uh, that is one of the reasons the 50-50 demand that is being demanded by Telangana. And secondly, sir, there have been allegations from both sides that both the states have been building dams and barrages in order to take water from the rivers. That is, in fact, uh, harming the other states. One so second, this is also second, another... Arania, one second. You're telling that there has been criticism from both the states that we are yes, building sir. dams. How yes, does sir. building dams in Andhra Pradesh affect Telangana? Sir, I think lift irrigation projects in uh, Andhra Pradesh requires water to be lifted from the rivers that are there and uh, that are flowing through Telangana and that might uh, hinder access to water in Telangana, even though it is an upstream region. But still, lift irrigation projects can be taken up to reduce the water level. So, I think that is the reason, sir. So, if Andhra Pradesh constructs a dam, does it affect water in Telangana? So definitely uh, Telangana is upstream region. So in that sense, it wouldn't affect it directly. But sir, there are norms regarding uh, certain water levels that have to be maintained in dams and other such criteria, which might get violated uh, when Andhra Pradesh tries to draw water from such tree. Okay. From such dam. But see, my question is specifically, which river and what is the exact problem? Recently, in the recent last few months, continuously in the news, Telangana and AP has a problem with, I mean, they have water dispute, no? What is the problem? Sir, I have to read about it a bit more. At least can I take a guess which rivers, which rivers are flowing commonly with David Telangana? Sir, Godavari and Krishna. Anything else? Sir, I think these two only. Are you sure? Hmm. Yes, sir. See, in Telangana, with the criticism that the development is being centralized on Hyderabad. Criticism yes. is there. Do you agree with the criticism? I mean, do you also think that uh, in Telangana, development is highly centralized in Hyderabad? First of all, yes or no, according to you? Say so, yes, sir. Uh, historically, also, if you see, uh, Hyderabad has been a uh, growth point uh, for the entire Telangana. However, sir, I believe times are changing. For instance, district reorganization has been done in order to make the development more decentralized. That is one step that Telangana has taken. Uh, apart from that, sir, even now, uh, IT is something that is excessively concentrated in Hyderabad region. But uh, the government has been trying to take IT to uh, other regions also. For instance, IT towers are being set up in uh, other districts of Telangana. And uh, there is some policy by government called grid policy, which incentivizes uh, uh, companies that are uh, establishing industries outside of uh, core Hyderabad region. So there are some of the steps that are being taken in order to 
decentralize the growth that government has also recognized has been heavily concentrated in hyderabad for well, good policy right us yes sir hmm so first of all is centralized development happening not happening centralized development in in telangana sir right now decentralization is the focus of the government but historically it has been centralized centralized only tell me the examples of decentralization other than the it towers and grid policy tell me major decentralized development examples so first is district reorganization uh, in order to increase oh. access of people to how district reorganization helps in decentralization from hyderabad how districts if divided somewhere else how it affects the hyderabad development of the districts okay so got it i think from de- decentralization from hyderabad is the question hmm tell me so, examples of decentralized development i mean decentralization is other than hyderabad other places developing there is a point yes sir so for instance in the outskirts of hyderabad uh, there are pharmaceutical companies that are coming up there is medical devices park in sultanpur and you know valley is also there that is one example secondly so there are food processing industries that are coming up in uh, districts like karimnagar and nizamabad uh, that is also one thing that uh, connotes uh, decentralization and uh, Yes, sir. These are two primary examples that I can think of. Recently, some MSM industries in Telangana are becoming popular. Can you tell me, mid-sector MSM industries are growing very strong in Telangana. MSM industries. So, IT. IT is something where MSM industries are growing in Telangana. uh in fact uh, government has also been taking steps like global linker chain in order to connect msme it industries to the global market uh secondly i think space is an interesting area so we had uh, some of the startups and msmes from space that are also sending private uh, uh satellites so that is an interesting sector that i can think of yes yeah, so these are the two sectors any examples from space tell me one company from space which which attracted your attention sir i think one is skyroot uh yes sir i can think of skyroot skyroot is established by whom sir i am not aware of it yes sir it's by a bunch of uh, engineers okay who worked all right three years ago okay now right. tell me india requires better bureaucrats i mean not better in the sense india is in more dire need and demand requirement of whom Bureau- bureaucrats or entrepreneurs i got to you do both are important do both are important if you have to choose one which one sir in my opinion india is in more need of bureaucrats better bureaucrats so the reason i say this is that uh, sir there is no uh, lack of talent in india sir i believe there are uh, entrepreneurs innovators that are coming up from grassroots level also however for these entrepreneurs to display their talents on the professional front it's extremely crucial that they have a certain regulatory environment that is conducive for them to uh, showcase this and to facilitate such kind of uh, environment i think bureaucrats become crucial sir so if there are better bureaucrats i think they will facilitate ease of doing business for not just entrepreneurs but also for other sorts of uh, uh, professionals which i believe will go a long way in making india okay if i had to ask you if i had ask you talent young people like you does india need more talented young people in politics or bureaucracy political leaders or bureaucrats sir i think politics is one area where it is heavily deprived of young talent i believe sir while there is significant attention that is given to bureaucracy from young sections of people politics is an area that has not been able to attract young talent and i believe if young talent uh, uh, gets into politics i believe there will be uh, a new way of thinking uh, and uh, they will be able to better uh, propel the nation forward so i believe politics is one area where youth has to be attracted Okay. Then why do you think people like you, who are from Delhi University, when where you actually the political center, 
of India, where you can learn politics and you have access to get into politics. Why you are not trying for politics? I'm not telling you why you are coming to bureaucracy. I know why you are coming to bureaucracy, but why you are not trying for getting into politics? Sir, I believe politics is an area where there are invisible entry barriers that are present, sir. So, for instance, bureaucracy is an area where there is uh, re respect that is given to merit and open recruitment systems are there. However, sir, if you want to enter into politics, I believe there are invisible entry barriers like money power, muscle power, which definitely hinder a uh, young, talented individual who has to invest a lot of years to make a career in such fields. So, I believe one is entry barrier, sir. And... Uh, Second is, sir, the perception regarding politics in India is something that is not really good. Uh, people believe that uh, politics corrupts the moral character and politics is an end in itself, is an end to achieve power and make money. So I think the perception of politics as a very respectable career is something that is yet to grow in India. Okay. Okay. You want to in uh, what, uh, geography B? Uh, spell, spell B. I mean, what is geography B? Sir, it was a, a state level competition that uh, tested students on just the knowledge about geographical places and things like that, sir. Oh, mostly places. Yes, you sir. You participated in your college days or your school days? So it was in my school days. Hmm. So you won medals at state level, right? Yes, sir. Good. Why you have no, no sports? I mean, Miranda House does not provide you any platform for playing, playing any kind of sports? So, no, sir. Uh, there is uh, adequate infrastructure at Miranda House, the basketball court, the tennis court that is present. However, sir, I was engaged in uh, other uh, societies also at my college level, and the geography was, in fact, a demanding course. So, it was uh, on my part that I wasn't able to find time. To play sports. In future, do you want to develop any interest? I mean, do you have interest to participate in any sports in future? Any so yes, sir, definitely. Attracts you, yeah. Yes, sir, definitely. I'm interested in tennis and cricket. These are two sports that I love watching, oh. and maybe I'll try to play you them. Watch, you watch cricket? Yes, sir. I'm in fact really tell me, interested. Tell me, technologies used in cricket in the decision review or decision taking. Tell me that technology is used in cricket. Sir, I'm not aware of the uh, exact technology, but I've heard the name called Hawkeye, uh, which is used uh, in DRS, I guess, sir. That is one technology I heard of. What is Hawkeye? Sir, I'm not sure of it. Generally, if the ball touches the bat or not, it has to be found out sometimes. When, when you watch cricket sometimes, when the bowler, you know, claims that the ball touches the bat. Yes, sir. In the decision review system or decision taking, what technology do they use? Sir, I think it's Hawkeye only because it will be able to ascertain if uh, the ball has touched the bat or not and then the empire can take a decision. Are you sure how uh, Hawkeye helps you in understanding whether the ball touches the bat or not? Sir, I've seen that if the ball touches the bat, there is some spikes that uh, that are shown uh, on the television usually to indicate that there has been some contact between ball and bat. So I think what are, some. What, what are those spikes? Sir, I'm not exactly sure of it. No. Reading Dan Brown fiction. Oh, specifically Dan Brown fiction. Why do you read only Dan Brown? Sir, I was. Introduced to Dan Brown fiction by a friend. I read one of his uh, books initially, Angels and Demons. And then it's basically historical fiction. And post that, sir, I was really interested in the way the author carries out the whole uh, uh, book. Like the whole story happens in 24 hours. And there are references to history, mythology, and a lot of uh, crime thrillers. One is Angels and Demons, the other book. Sir, I also read, uh, because of Dan Brown, I got interested in historical fiction and mythology related books. And accordingly, I read Amish Tripathi's books. That no, is an what, what, what I'm telling is, Dan Brown's fiction only, other yes. than Angels and Demons, which books have you read? Sir, there is Da Vinci Code. There is Origin. Lost Symbol. 
Inferno. These are some of the books I read, so of Dan Brown. What is the climax of Inferno? So climax of Inferno is basically about uh, technology. Uh, it states that, I mean, how AI outdoes human uh, mind is something that it ends with. So basically, there's a climax. Are you sure? Yes, sir. That is how it ends. The whole uh, conclude concludes the uh, part of it. What is the origin? Origin? What is it? Other yes, book? sir. Uh, Da Vinci Code origin. What is the origin? What is the ending of origin? Origin. Sir, ending of origin is also about how uh, science and religion uh, basically try to overpower each other and uh, how is ultimately. That, no, that, sorry, Anya. Yeah, yeah. So, see, I want exact exact conclusion. What are the last few okay. uh, pages of the book? Sir, what are the theme of the book? You tell me the theme. Sir, origin ends by stating that uh, uh, how uh, the a person in the uh, book uh, that is uh, a priest uh, brings back the glory of the church by exposing the fault lines that are present in science. This is how it ends, sir. Good. And you're reading Amish Tripathi also? Yes, sir. Any Indian do you know who won Pulitzer Prize? Pulitzer Prize. Any right? Any Indian author? So no, sir. I'm not aware. Do you know any Indian novelist who has won the recent Padma Awards? Any Indian novelist is there? Sir, I'm not sure of it. Sir. Tell me some famous awards for authors. Pulitzer Prize. Sir. Then. Sorry, sir. Tell me some famous prizes, international prizes won by the authors, writers. Like how so I, said, like I said, Pulitzer Prize, no? Like that, name some uh, some very famous prizes, medals. So there is Man Booker Prize. Who won the Man Booker Prize even, from India? Arundhati Roy has won a uh, Man Booker Prize for God of Small Things from and India. Then, and then? Sir, I think Arvind Adiga for his White Tiger has also won uh, a Man Booker Prize, sir. Are you sure about that? Yes, sir. Sure. Who won the Pulitzer Prize? Both of them did not win the Pulitzer Prize. Which is more prestigious? Which is got by few? Pulitzer or Booker Prize? Sir, I think Pulitzer is more prestigious than Man Booker Prize. Okay. Continue, continue. Any other prizes? Uh, sir, even Nobel Committee gives uh, prizes in literature for uh, the authors. That is there. Okay. And apart from that, even at India, there are many prizes like Nanpeet Award, Saitya Academy Award, and tell me some things. few uh, winners of Nanpeet Award. Nanpeet Award. Sir Gulzar is one person I can think of that has won Nanpeet Award. Mm. Or sir, even from Telugu states, I think uh, Shri Shri has won a Nanpeet Award. Tell me some famous yes, books by Shri Shri. Sir, Mahasangramam is something that I can think of. Mahasangramam, what is the theme of the book? I mean, what does he tell in the book? Sir, I'm not aware of it, sir. Sorry. Okay. You never read in Telugu novels? You don't know English novels? Sir, I've not read novels per se, but uh, yes, sir, I do read some of the poems and good lines from Telugu. Okay. Uh, what is this green edges? You mentioned implementation plan of green nudges. What is green nudges? So nudges is basically a behavioral economics concept that uh, tries to incentivize people to adopt a certain modes of behavior. So green nudges is basically a behavioral economics concept again that nudges participants to adopt green practices and green behaviors that is environmentally conscious. What, what is your role exactly? What have you done there? So my role is that of a coordinator. I try to collect ideas from my class people who were giving me very innovative ideas. And then I try to discuss it with a group of students regarding which ideas can be implemented, which cannot be implemented, which are not feasible. 
and then i again coordinated that with uh, people who are actually implementing them like the class representatives of other departments and other such stuff so that they will be implemented on the ground level so my role basically is that of a coordinator sir yeah, got got okay is uh so you more than one agent na which one which one more than one ananya before end the interview anything so, you want to tell me sir nothing sir uh okay so ananya it is over okay